Ladies and gentlemen, the agenda of tonight's joint meeting is, is at the uh, far corner of that table over there. When we get to the public speaking portion, if you could kindly and you want to speak, uh, and again, the, the whole gist of this meeting tonight is, is just that, we serve you. So any questions you want to ask, uh, any criticisms, any suggestions, feel free, but you need to sign in just so we can keep minutes for the record tonight. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, open up the meeting. If everybody could please stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay stand. I'd like to take a, a, a moment of silence. Uh, Brockton lost uh, a dedicated professional to the Brockton Public Schools last night. Mr. Carl Yancey tragically lost his life, a uh, hit and run uh, victim on Belmont Street. Uh, Carl was uh, working at the Goddard School as an MTA, monitor teacher's assistant. Uh, he was very much uh, loved and well respected, and I I'd like to take a moment to honor him and I pray as well to his family. May he rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, just a point of information, a couple of our colleagues on the local uh, elected official standpoint uh, indicated they could not join us tonight. Um, we have uh, Mr. Wayne McAllister from the Southeastern Regional uh, Vocational, one of the Brockton representatives. Unfortunately, due to health, he can't be here tonight. Councilor Stanensky from Ward 4 and Councilor Lodge Shana Bonds also uh, due to health uh, cannot be here tonight. And uh, Alicia Clark, Attorney Alicia Clark, School Committee woman from Ward 3, is unable to join us tonight. Um, but I do want to thank uh, all the local elected officials that are here tonight. Uh, the gist of this joint meeting, uh, as, uh, as people that might have sat uh, at the one we had in February or watched it on TV, uh, it was the first one that had ever happened in the history of Brockton. Uh, the intent was there. We needed to kind of iron out a little bit of the wrinkles. So uh, we did just that. I want to thank uh, Vice Chair Tom, Attorney Tom Minicello from the School Committee. Uh, and Mark Lindy from Southeastern Regional, and, uh, and Bill Carpenter, the mayor of Brockton. Uh, we work together. There is an agenda here. The gist is going to be this, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a three-minute update relative to the city council offered by myself, Robert Sullivan, as council president. Uh, Mr. Attorney Minicello will offer the same from the school committee. Uh, mayor Carpenter will do the same relative to the mayor, and Mr. Lindy relative to the Southeastern Regional. So that would be a total of maximum 12 minutes. Um, at that time, uh, we will then open it up uh, because we're really here for you tonight. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please do sign in. At the end of the uh, meeting before we adjourn, uh, I will ask if any elected official wants to take a quick moment of personal privilege. I know, at least on the city council, there are a few that have ward meetings coming up. Uh, but I think that that's uh, going to be uh, the best process tonight. Plus, I've been told by many people that there's a football game tonight. Uh, so uh, some people think time is of the essence. I want to recognize Claire Cronin, state representative, for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Claire, for being here. Uh, and Mr. Buckley, chief of staff for the mayor, is here as well. Um, if I could, ladies and gentlemen, relative to the city council, again, uh, there's 11 of us that serve, four of us at councils at large serve the whole city, and of course, uh, there's seven wards, and we have a, a city councilor serving a district or ward-wide uh, here in the city of Brockton with a total of 11 of us. Um, some of the things that we've done since the last meeting, of course, is we had the budget hearings in June. I'd like to thank my colleagues in the City Council. We did ratify the Mayor's budget, and again, it's about $375 million. Uh, it's tough. It's tough economic times, but I want to thank uh, the City Councils. We had three very long uh, nights for the budget hearings. I think they did it professionally, and uh, they were doing the best they can with what we have. So thank you to that. Um, the end of the summer session, the City Council under the charter of the City of Brockton has summer sessions. It concludes this month, September. We will be back in full swing, as they say, uh, starting October, which is coming up this week. The first and third Monday, 7 o'clock at City Hall. We always meet as a finance committee. All 11 of us serve on the finance committee, and as the president, I chair that. The second and fourth Monday at 8 o'clock is a regular city council meeting. So again, first and third, second and fourth. If there happens to be a fifth Monday of the month, we do not, uh, we do not meet. Uh, some of the things that we've done uh, recently, um, we have a few uh, uh, prior resolves that were done, some re resolves that were drafted by my colleagues, Councilor at Large Jay Stewart, Councilor at Large Moses Rodriguez. Uh, and if I don't uh, address every resolve tonight, I, I do apologize, but time is of the essence. These resolves were to have Kathy Smith, the Superintendent of Schools, come before the City Council as Finance Committee and give a state of the city of schools here. And uh, I, I want to thank the superintendent. I know she's here tonight. If anybody has any questions, she's ready, willing, and able to do that. Uh, but my colleagues brought it forward. I thought it was extremely important. The mayor is joining us. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> it's been a long day. Sorry. We have a few upcoming resolves. Uh, 
Council DiNapoli uh, is having a resolve uh, to discuss the potential ability of the city to buy some fire trucks uh, here in the city of Brockton. Uh, myself as Councilor Lodge have a resolve coming up that's joined collectively by the city council. As you may recall, it was a war memorial restoration project under Mayor Harrington, and we want to get a status update of the funds, uh, how much was raised and what it was spent on and what the balance is. Um, Real Estate Committee is chaired by Councilor Dubois. Uh, she, to her credit, my colleagues are joined uh, on that committee, uh, had a special meeting, uh, a late meeting on a Friday, uh, a week ago Friday, relative to the Ganley building, the old building at the corner of Belmont and Maine, Joe Ganley's old building. Uh, and we took a, uh, a vote uh, that was favorably recommended from the Real Estate Committee. And the City Council, under suspension of rules, on Monday night, uh, voted to uh, give the authority uh, to the mayor uh, to, uh, to sell that property for a dollar to the state. And then the understanding is, and hopeful, uh, that it will be used for educational purposes in the near future. And it's really going to be an eyesore that's going to be cleaned up. So I want to thank everybody on the Real Estate Committee relative to that. Ordinance Committee is chaired. And I think, in my humble opinion, this is the most important committee on the City Council ordinances impact our daily lives to the laws of uh, the city of Brockton. It's chaired by Ward 3, uh, and, and it looks like uh, future president next year, Council Ian Airy. Uh, there is a uh, ordinance uh, meeting coming up on October 20th at the city hall chambers at 6 o'clock. Uh, again, we have some city projects that are going on, and thanks to the city council's efforts uh, through either TIF, which is tax incremental financing, where we give some, uh, some tax breaks short term. Um, we see W.B. Mason having a $3 million expansion. Of course, you see Trinity Financial. But if you go over to Ward 7 on Oak Street, you see Crown Linen. They left South Boston. They came here to the City of Champions. If you haven't seen the old Howard Johnson's plant, you'll be amazed at the beauty. They really uh, thank you, Shirley Azak. Council Azak is working diligently on that. And uh, we thank uh, all the efforts on that behalf. Um, again, a lot of these endeavors, uh, Vincente's, uh, which is a natural expansion here in the city of Brockton, the old Star Market on Warren Ave and Pleasant. If you haven't seen it, there's uh, really a lot of work being done there now relative to groundbreaking. And they're not leaving their original spot on South Main Street. They're doing a natural expansion. And again, the city of Brockton, through the mayor and the city council, we gave uh, Mr. Vincente's uh, family a tiff to, to get it going and making sure that that's going to be utilized to the best interest. And it will be because it falls within the Chapter 40 Smart Growth Zoning of the city of Brockton through the city council. Uh, lastly, uh, Councilor Stadensky, who again I indicated is, is unfortunately sick tonight, wanted to tell me to express to you uh, that he is ex uh, extremely pleased with um, uh, all the people at the Gilmore School that addressed uh, what was found in the woods. There was a firearm that was found in the woods. Councilor Stadensky, of course, is the former police chief in the city of Brockton. He worked with the, with the principal of Gilmore. And uh, he felt that the, uh, the police, law enforcement, and of course the school personnel and the superintendent handled that professionally, appropriately, and he just wanted to make it clear and publicly announce that tonight. Um, with that being said, counselors, uh, I, I don't believe there's anything else relative to the, uh, the update. Again, the gist of tonight is to, uh, to really hear from the people and get the questions. But again, if any of you want to make a public announcement at the end relative to ward, we're limited to ward meetings. I know, counsel, you have one coming up. Uh, but with that, that being said, I'll pass it on to my colleagues, uh, Attorney uh, Minicello. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, good evening, everyone. I will um, tell you that the Brockton Public Schools is still doing just fine, despite the budget that we went through. However, um, it's a place where lots of people want their children to be. Um, we, we do our best with the budget that we have. And how do I know that it's a place where people want to be? Well, because our numbers keep increasing. Uh, when I was on the school committee several years ago, Mrs. Joyce can attest to this, our enrollment was probably around 15,000 plus students. Today, the number is 17,438. Now, just to put that into perspective, in 2009 is when we uh, opened our last, what I would consider our newest school, um, which would, would have been the George School. And um, since that date, uh, we have enrollment and an increase of nearly 1,900 students. Um, now, as you all know, there's quite a bit of development going on, especially around Ward 6. And just coming from my house, going downtown, you see all the development going on um, near the Enterprise and W.B. Mason. So the question that the schools are going to have to answer, and with our counterparts on the city side, is where are these children going to be going? Because um, we really have a, a space issue right now, 
It's something that we discussed, and uh, my colleagues are aware of this. Uh, we discussed it at the last meeting we had over at West. So uh, we have some long-range uh, planning. Um, the superintendent has uh, presented us with a strategic plan. We have to look forward, um, and we have to look at available state funding in order to get matching funds because there's no way Brockton could afford to open a new school without applying for assistance through the state building uh, assistance fund. Uh, with respect to uh, the programs, unfortunately we as you know and if you listen to the, uh, the enterprise, uh, we had a 5.7 million dollar cut um, and that was a very real cut. We had to, uh, we had to eliminate some positions uh, some of those positions are still eliminated. Uh, approximately 30 plus positions are no longer here. These were real bodies, real people that were contributing uh, to the Brockton Public Schools. In addition, we had to cut some programs. And just to let you know, uh, those programs, in my opinion, were very significant. Technology was cut $2 million. Uh, substitute teachers, what we're doing is uh, unfortunately placing a lot of kids in studies because we can't afford to have a substitute as, as often as we'd like. Uh, that's about a half a million dollars. Uh, extended learning over at one of our schools, the Huntington was cut, 300,000. Uh, Brockton High School Clubs and Activities, 25,000. Um, let me clarify something. In Brockton, as many of you know who are Brocktonians, we've had traditionally what's called a middle school sports program. That is a competitive program between all of the middle schools and now the K through eights because those have six through eight and could compete with the other middle schools. Um, the mayor provided us with some funding because we had eliminated all sports at the middle school level. Um, but the middle school competitive sports program is still eliminated. However, uh, through the mayor's office, we were able to bring back uh, middle school intramurals. And we brought back intramurals because it's a non cut activity and we felt that. More children, if they wanted to be involved after school, could participate because, it's, again, it's a non-cut uh, situation. So um, that's one of the programs that, unfortunately, is not available at this time. We've also had to cut some after-school academic um, items and to the tune of 350000 and then the rest was basically personnel. Um, the good news is that we've restored, as you probably saw in the paper, uh, positions with respect to crossing guards. The school committee uh, through the transportation safety and security subcommittee chaired by Mrs. Joyce uh, worked diligently to maintain the current busing. We had more students this year. We had about 450 more students that needed to be bused. We needed four more buses. As you all know the cost of fuel is going up. So um, the 7.3 million dollars that we have to allocate towards busing, crossing guards, and some community school activities had to be stretched. And due to the efforts uh, with the custodians through negotiations, we were able to come to an agreement in order to buffer the gap with respect to the number of personnel. And we were able to bring back a number of crossing guard positions. Uh, we brought it up to 100 positions, 92 actually active positions, and eight floaters, basically substitutes, so that if someone's out, we have eight substitutes to choose from in order to fill a spot. And as we all know, um, there was a horrible situation at the end of the summer with some little children getting hit by buses, so it was a concern to everyone here in this room um, about the safety and security of our kids uh, crossing the streets. As we all know, um, Brockton's a very busy place. Um, that being said, uh, I don't want to hog my time. I think I've probably gone over my three minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are here to answer questions. As, we, uh, as Council President Sullivan stated, the last time we sort of ran on, and tonight it's, re, uh, it's re basically redone and re-programmed re, uh, up so that you can ask questions and spend most of the time talking to us instead of us talking to you. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Cello. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Carpenter. Thank you. Uh, First of all, I want to be sure to thank the Council President, Mr. Sullivan, and the School Committee Vice Chair, Mr. Minicello, for working together to coordinate uh, tonight's event. I think we're all in agreement that uh, 
we think we should make ourselves periodically available to the public to answer questions. And uh, I think that's the in intent of tonight's meeting. And I, I just want to publicly thank both of these gentlemen for their work to put this together. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been an eventful and challenging past 24 hours in the city. Uh, you know, we had tragedy in the city last night when a young man named Carl Yancey was struck and killed by a vehicle on Belmont Street. It's a hit and run accident. First, you know, for Mr. Yancey's family, uh, we share their grief and mourn their loss with them. Uh, I think the whole city feels this. He was a great young man who was extremely popular at the West Side Shaw's. Also worked as an MTA at the um, Goddard School. And uh, I know throughout the school system, I'm sure the superintendent would tell us, uh, was a very difficult day today as many people who knew Mr. Yancey uh, were just shocked by his loss. I will tell you that um, in spite of a major police operation that was going on in the city throughout the day today, uh, there were both Brockton police detectives and state police detectives who have been actively working that investigation since it happened last night. Uh, they are under the direction of the Plymouth County DA, Tim Cruz. And uh, I'll assure everybody that it is a very active, ongoing investigation with resources being committed. And I have a tremendous amount of confidence in both our detectives and the state troopers to solve it. Um, 5 a.m. this morning, an operation began across the city, uh, Brockton Fights Back, uh, that was um, a joint operation of the Brockton Police Department, working side by side with the state police assigned to uh, District Attorney Cruz's office, a number of other state police agencies, federal agencies, including DEA, Secret Service, um, ATF, we're all involved in Brockton today, uh, along with the Plymouth County Sheriff. We had over 100 law enforcement officers that met up at 5 o'clock this morning and fanned out across the city with uh, arrest warrants and search warrants to take dangerous individuals off the streets of the city. And uh, the operation was a success. Uh, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, when the operation pretty much had been completed, uh, we did release a press release and identified 36 individuals that were picked up today. Um, we were still looking for one at the time and that person was not referenced in the, uh, in the press release, but I'm pleased to tell you that about an hour later, uh, a man uh, named Sean Cox was located and arrested on a federal warrant. This is an individual with a long history of gun violence um, who was tied to another gun crime that was brought to the U.S. Attorney, and uh, the U.S. Attorney is prosecuting him now under a career criminal statute that will put him away for at least 20 years. Uh, so we did not have an exact address for that individual. We were able to use the manpower that we had in the city uh, as we wrapped up the uh, other individuals that we had targeted with warrants to spread across the city this afternoon and uh, locate this individual, and they, and they did. so a total of 37, um, and uh, I'm just extremely proud of uh, all of the Brockton officers that were involved, and I'm, I'm very thankful uh, to the state police, the troopers, particular Captain Warmington, uh, who works under, uh, under District Attorney Cruz, for all the effort and resources they brought working side by side with Brockton police today. Um, the day wasn't done, so I was a few minutes late because about an hour ago, well, about an hour and a half ago now, uh, we had a drive-by shooting on Warren Avenue. And uh, it is, there was a victim who was shot in the leg. It is not considered to be life-threatening. Um, we did immediately have, there were two Brockton police detectives in an unmarked car one block away that heard the gunshots. They were on the scene immediately. Um, conflicting immediate witness statements, kind of pointing them in various directions. They did make a couple stops. They did not get the car with the shooter at that time. Uh, but we had uh, the Plymouth County uh, BCI unit, who was already in the city, immediately on the scene collecting evidence. And as I left the scene a little while ago, uh, evidence was still being collected. Witness statements were being taken. And uh, there was a very, uh, very active investigation. So um, 
it's, it's, it's been a very challenging 24 hours. We are all shaken by the loss of Mr. Yancey and look forward to the driver that's responsible being identified and apprehended. Uh, but I'm also exceptionally proud um, of the uh, Brockton Police Department and uh, along with the state troopers and all the other agencies. You know, we promised true interagency cooperation. I think you saw it today with over 100 law enforcement officers from about at least eight different law enforcement entities all working side by side across the city. There was amongst the arrests, I should mention this because this will be of interest, on Turner Street, uh, there was a search warrant executed that netted a significant amount of heroin package for distribution along with a loaded handgun, house that Brockton police detectives have had under surveillance for some time. Uh, also, I'm very pleased to tell you that one of the individuals targeted was the individual who had been arrested and charged with robbing the veteran outside of the stop and shop on North Montello Street. He had defaulted on his court warrant and uh, he was picked up today as part of uh, today's operation. So he was in custody this afternoon and being transported to court. So um, there were a number of significant arrests uh, made across the city today. And uh, in spite of tonight's incident, I will tell you that the city is a safer place tonight than it was this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, can I have one more thing? Sure. Um, just one quick thing I was remiss at. Um, the Brockton Public Schools is uh, looking at every grant possibility there is in terms of bringing more funding into, into the city. Um, the superintendent has uh, expanded the grants department and uh, they're doing a good job um, basically buffering some of the, um, some of the uh, items that we had to remove. Um, our state delegation does a, a, a good job for us too. And I would remiss if I didn't say that uh, Representative Cronin, uh, who is here this evening, always sends the school committee information about what she's up to, what's going on, and um, is finding monies for the Brockton Public Schools. And um, Claire, you do a great job, and I just wanted to make sure people know that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We also want to thank our uh, Senator Tom Kennedy, uh, State Representative Mike Brady, and uh, outgoing State Representative Christine Kahneman as well. Uh, Brockton's very fortunate to have three reps and a senator that goes to bat for us every day. So thank you, Claire. With that being said, uh, Mr. Lindy, if you could get us an update relative to Southeastern Regional Vocational. Thank you, uh, Council President Sullivan, and thank you to the Mayor and Tom Minicello. It's nice to be all in the same place. I have nothing but good news to report about Southeastern Regional. First of all, if you haven't read the paper, we are now a level one school. Um, we are one of the highest schools in the Commonwealth for vocational students. 66% um, of them are from the city of Brockton. This year we had 447 applicants from Brockton and we accepted 293 of them. So we by far have the biggest share of the population in the school. Um, there is also a rolling admissions policy where if students decide that they want a vocational technical experience with good academics, they can go to the school and it's not unheard of. I checked today just to make sure. Um, there were about 10 freshman transfers, 20 sophomore transfers, and five joint transfers. Southeastern, if you're not sure, has nine communities of which Brockton's the largest one of it. Um, but we met or exceeded every single goal. We went from 19% to 32%, and I have some statistics from the superintendent's office. Um, we had in the accountability report for 2014, a rating of above target in every subgroup in English language arts, a rating of above target in six out of seven subgroups in math, and no rating at all below target, an overall rating of above target in science, including improvement in all subgroups over the previous year, and a dramatic increase of 12.6 CPI points in our African American subgroup. Overall student growth percentiles above the state average in all areas, including significant growth among special ed students. A very significant increase in our four-year graduation rate from 88.6% to 93.1%, and a very low dropout rate of 1.4%. So our teachers, our faculty, our staff, our administrative team all do their job very well, just like the Brockton Public Schools, and uh, we have an al a alternative where people can learn a skill and have good academics. We have students that go on to Skills USA and all sorts of uh, co-op job placements. Our co-ops are all up and it's nothing but a good news story for the city of Brockton and the surrounding nine towns. And um, we have um, an open house 
on November 15th between 11 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So any questions about Southeastern, myself, uh, there are nine representatives. We're all elected at large, but Wayne McAllister and myself are the two folks that represent Brockton. And I'm just happy to be at the table with all of you folks. Thank you, Mr. Lindy. Uh, I, I was remiss. I, I think it'd be appropriate to, uh, to announce the local officials that are here tonight. From the school, school committee, we have uh, Ward 4 uh, School Committee Woman Patty Joyce, uh, Ward 5 School Committee Woman Judy Sullivan, Ward 6 School Committee Member uh, Ozzy Jordan, Ward 7 School Committee Member Ray Henningsen. From the City Council, we have Ward 1 Councilor Tim Cruz, Ward Councilor from, uh, from the second Ward, Ward 2 is Tom Monahan, Ward 3 City Councilor Dennis Ianeri. Again, I said Councilor Paul Stadinsky is unable to join us. Uh, Councilor Denapoli, Dennis Denapoli from Ward 5, Councilor Michelle Dubois from Ward 6, Councilor Shirley Azak from Ward 7, and my two colleagues, Councilors at Large, uh, Moises Rodriguez and Jay Stewart, and of course, Shana Barnes was unable to join us. I want to thank everybody from the local officials for being here tonight. Uh, I know this is the second meeting, but it's extremely important. And now we're going to really get to the basis of the meeting. I want to thank uh, the Mayor, Mr. Minicello, Mr. Lindy, for giving uh, really good updates. Uh, but with that being said, on the agenda, this is the public comment, public questions section. If anybody has any questions for the school committee, the mayor, the city council, Southeastern Regional, now is your, your opportunity. And if you do want to speak or ask questions or even criticize us, uh, you, could, uh, you could sign in again for the, for the meeting. With that being said, I'll open that part up if anybody would like to ask a question. Anybody here in the... Uh I didn't see criticizers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mention criticizers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night. Thank you. <laughs> My Good evening. Name, my name is Lynn Smith. I live in Ward 4. I wonder if you could give us an update on the situation with the power plant, as we're hearing a lot of conflicting information in the press. Thank you. But is, is, that, is that for the city council or the mayor? Or who, who is it for? Collectively? or I could just tell you from the city council's perspective, I won't speak for the mayor, but the city council is a named defendant in a federal lawsuit. Uh, so what I will say uh, is that we have legal counsel representing us on that matter, uh, and we have been advised not to uh, speculate or conjure on what may or may not happen. Uh, I know publicly the city council has, uh, has stated where we stand on it, and uh, I don't think that that's changed. So I'll leave it at that, but the fight continues. I'll, uh, my turn? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Is my mic on? Okay. Uh, as the council president noted, uh, there is a lot of legal activity going on, and, and I've also been cautioned by city attorneys to be very limited in my public comments. But having said that, um, I'll be happy to clarify uh, anything that's been reported in the newspaper. Uh, I did authorize the city attorneys to explore the possibility of a settlement. I did this based upon the unanimous advice of all of the city attorneys and I have, and, and that's the extent of it at this point. So any speculation that there's some sort of secret deal, that people aren't being let into it, there's just no basis to it. Attorneys from one side are speaking to attorneys from the other side. In my briefings with the city attorneys, I shared with them what I thought some of the parameters and requirements would have to be if there were to be a successful negotiation. That was my role, uh, to give them some guidance. Having done that, the lawyers are now entered into discussions with attorneys. Uh, there are a lot of attorneys involved. The thing is drowning in attorneys. So um, at this point, you know, when there's something to report, uh, I will certainly report it. In, uh, in relation to Council President uh, Sullivan's comment, uh, it's correct that the city council does have their own separate legal counsel as a defendant in the suit from the city solicitor's office. And I've been advised that if there reaches a point where there's been significant developments, um, that the city attorneys would then consult with the city council attorneys to keep them apprised. So when there is something to report, uh, the city council's attorneys will be uh, brought up to speed on it. And uh, that's all there is right now. Thank you for the question. Anybody else have a question?
Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you all. Thank you for being here. Um, I just want to ask if someone, uh, whoever is appropriate, would clarify what with tr uh, the Trinity Financial Block, just what the um, uh, formula is going to be for subsidized housing, market rate housing. I have a lot of people asking me this. I know there's a lot of misinformation again about what's going on there. So if someone could clarify that for, for those that are watching. Yeah, Thank I, you. Ellie, I'll be happy to give a response Thank you. to that. I mean, certainly housing is uh, going to be a, uh, an important piece of the redevelopment of downtown Brockton. Um, the model that I've seen work in other cities like Brockton uh, you know, manufacturing legacy cities that are trying to redevelop in the 21st century uh, are mixed-use buildings. I think it's critical to keep the business district intact on the first floor of all of these buildings, in some cases the first two floors, um, but I think also uh, the type of development that we're going to be able to get is probably some combination of housing and commercial in mixed use buildings with some housing built above a commercial business district. Uh, having said that, um, I think there is sometimes justifiably some concern when residents hear about developers qualifying uh, for low income tax credits in order to help finance a development. The reality with the median income that they use, and we've looked at this very carefully, uh, the rents that are called for for the units that are subject to this that were created by the low income tax credits, it's, it's not a big corridor between what current market value rates are in the city. And some of the examples that I was shown, you know, on a one bedroom apartment, it might be $100 to $150 a month difference in rent. On a two bedroom apartment, it might be a little bit more than that. But a range of one or $200 a month off of market rate I don't believe is going to substantially change uh, the folks that are renting. Um, I think we want workforce development housing. We want affordable housing for people who work and have jobs and want to live here in the city, and particularly if they want to live in the downtown. Um, but also uh, working with our new city planner, uh, Rob May, uh, he, has, uh, he is crafting a strategy that we will be unveiling very soon a, a comprehensive plan for the redevelopment of the downtown business district. Um, however, I will tell you that it will include a housing development incentive program, and that, ta that specific tax incentive is for developing market rate housing. So there will be, as part of the redevelopment plan of downtown, there will be a district created that will offer tax incentives to developers specifically and only for market rate housing. So, Elliot certainly is part of the planning puzzle. I think that, and I, I thank the City Council support for helping us create and fund a planning office, and it's great to have an experienced planner working. We've got a junior planner soon to be hired. Pam Gurley has been there doing a good job for a long time, and uh, it, it's, it's great to have a, a, a development team coming together and I think when this comprehensive plan comes forward, uh, this will be an important key piece of it, the uh, housing development incentive plan that will be specifically a tax incentive for market rate housing. Anybody on the city council want to uh, discuss that endeavor, any of the ward councils or anything? I think when we look at the old Stalin Dean building, we had a gentleman come into Brockton, Jason Korb, uh, who developed it on Montella Street, did an unbelievable job. He spoke at uh, Council Monaghan's ward meeting many times. And believe it or not, he was so successful, he had to turn away applicants. And those aren't condos, those are uh, rental apartments as well. So there is a need, obviously, uh, and that's an example. And people are paying to live there, which is uh, a great for the area. Any other questions relative to the school committee, Southeast and City Council? Good evening. I'm Cindy Ethiakoska from Ward 4. I wanted to know if there's any development plans for the Kmart shopping plaza on Main Street. It's, there's 11 empty storefronts. That's a gateway from West Bridgewater, Route 28 into the city. A lot of people refer to it as a ghost town. There's also the Honeydew Donuts just closed recently, making now 12 empty um, available storefronts there. We don't have restaurants. We don't have any entertainment venues in Ward 4. 
we have a lot of empty space there that really needs to be filled. I want to know if the city is working on getting any development in there. Well, I think that with the, uh... with the appointment of Gary Leonard as our um, Main Street manager, that business district is part of the Main Street corridor. Sometimes Main Street is a little misunderstood, but it's really the Main Street corridor roughly from Warren Avenue to Montella Street from the north end of the city to the south end of the city. And I will tell you that he has identified that area that you described as his um, prime area of work uh, for his first year as Main Street manager. He's actively working with the property owners there. Um, it's, it's a little premature and too sensitive, but I know that Gary's working on several initiatives, one which may include uh, relocating of a state agency to that area that would draw traffic that would help us to then allow you know, businesses to come back in and repopulate those plazas. I mean, really, it was the loss of Shaw's, the loss of that anchor store that, you know, one by one, the small businesses, you know, failed or moved when they didn't have the anchor store there anymore to, to, to pull the traffic in. So I think Gary has identified the need um, to reestablish a couple of anchors down in that area um, to then help develop the smaller business around them. So uh, it's a prime area of focus for us in terms of economic development for the city. Um, I think also uh, I should tell you that um, through the Old Colony Planning Council, uh, I've agreed to work cooperatively with the town of West Bridgewater so that we can work together in redeveloping that business corridor on both sides of the city line. Because I think, you know, nowadays economic development really tends to be regional in many ways. And, you know, the West Bridgewater side of that business district is not doing very well either. Um, and I've seen this work very successfully. I had a chance to meet recently with um, Mayor Sullivan of Braintree and uh, uh, Mayor Kay of Weymouth. And they entered into a similar type of agreement in the Weymouth Landing Area where Braintree and Weymouth kind of share the same business district. And by working together, getting their ordinances to align, working jointly on business development, they brought the whole area back and both, both cities benefited. So I think we're looking to also engage in that type of an effort with the town of West Bridgewater. And uh, we have uh, recently signed an agreement to work cooperatively with West Bridgewater. So I think that those two initiatives are very important early steps in the right direction, but I, I share your concern. It's probably the, uh, um, the area for economic development that needs the most attention right now, and, and we are making that commitment to it. Council President, may Council. I just add on to that? Absolutely, Council. I do know um, that the city has started um, clearing out the streams that cause a lot of the, the water backup down at the Kmart Plaza, and that they're specifically looking at some of the issues that the business owner has, where the Kmart Plaza really gets all the water, even from up in Ward 6, after a big rainstorm, and then after the, rain, the water dissipates the, the you know, just nasty detritus that's left behind, the, um, the business owner at that plaza takes a lot of care in cleaning up. So the city is um, currently cleaning up the, um, the rivers, and they're looking at a way to make a permanent solution to that, because they are looking at moving some uh, businesses into that area that just, it just has not, um, the official contract has not been signed yet. So I think you will be seeing some changes down there, and it should be announced uh, pretty shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. And I will say, even though Paul Stanisky is not here, I have sit on, sat on, on meetings with the Councilor and also representatives uh, from the town of West Bridgewater relative specifically to Shaw's. And for those that live in that area or frequented at Shaw's, they spent thousands and thousands of dollars to renovate that place. And then all of a sudden, bang, they closed. Uh, and what they've told uh, Councilor Stanisky and, and former selectman uh, Matt Albanese uh, from West Bridgewater is that they would rather pay money on that and have it unoccupied right now uh, as, as a deterrent to have competition there. Uh, it's their cost of doing business. It's a terrible way, to, in my humble opinion, to do work. Uh, but I know that uh, the city of Brockton is working, and we do hear the city council loud and clear uh, what the people want down there. Any other questions? Oh, Mayor. Sure. If I could just follow up on, on both of the Council's comments. Uh, first, I want to mention that Councilor Ian Erie, along with Councilor Stadensky, has been very instrumental in working with us down in that Shaw's Plaza business district area. And I, I appreciate Councilor Dubois mentioning the um, 
some of the infrastructure work that the city's trying to do to make that Kmart Plaza less susceptible to flooding. That's an example, Cindy, of, of what we can do with uh, Gary Leonard as the Main Street manager. He initiated that whole conversation, brought the building owner in to sit with the city agencies and look at the history and what steps could be taken. And there are some steps being taken, like cleaning out of culverts, some steps on their side of some better maintenance on their side, and a commitment also on our side um, to, be, to more frequently maintain the infrastructure that drains out into the wetlands area so that it won't back up into the parking lot. And I believe, Councilor Yaniri, you sat in on that meeting, I believe, when we had that. So um, I know we've, we've got the ward councilors, the, the business, the Main Street manager, and I, I think that's the type of collaboration we're hoping to bring together to create a be better business environment down there so we can attract some businesses back in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good question. Hey, any other questions from anybody, any members of the audience here? If so, please come forward. Good evening. And no one has mentioned the kickoff time of the Patriots game. No, good but she's got a Patriots shirt on, so there you go. Good mind, everybody. Uh, good evening. My name is Kathy Rose. I live in uh, Ward 4. And my question is actually related to Perkins Park. Um, it's kind of a twofold question. Um, the same group, Father Bills, is um, got pretty far along in it getting their, their another shelter built up on North Main Street near Ames. And um, it seemed that it got uh, not, not a lot of the neighbors knew about this or anything. And the concern is, is that uh, Perkins Park, um, as we know, is a, kind of a spillover from Main Spring, and um, there's a lot more residences in the area where, they're, where they've proposed to put another of this type of shelter in. So the question is, is there a plan to clean up both Perkins Park and also to keep something like that from happening at the new location on North Main? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, and it's probably one of the tougher challenges we have to solve, but there's no doubt that in terms of us being successful redeveloping the downtown business district, we have to clean up that section of North Main Street. That's the, that's the northern gateway into the downtown, and it's not unusual to get on that block and see 50, 75, 100 people loitering. And, you know, people coming into the city, when, once I, I believe they come upon that, um, they're rolling up their windows and locking their doors, and they're not going to stop two blocks later to get out and spend some money at a local business. So I, I think it's a huge concern. Uh, to answer your question, um, we're doing a couple things proactively with the Perkins Park. Uh, we have, and we started this probably about three months ago, we've started enforcing the dust to dawn curfew that's an existing uh, Parks Department uh, regulation that was not being enforced before. Uh, so we actually have the motorcycle unit going in there several times a night to make sure that people are not staying in there at night. We don't have a legal right to kick them out during the day, it's a public park. Uh, but there is a long-standing Parks Department regulation that says the park is closed from dusk to dawn. We're enforcing that now. Uh, that's only a very small part of the problem. Um, we're very close to announcing a five-person task force. This is one of a number of difficult issues that I think the city has to find a way to work with Father Bills, including the relocation. I want to see the mainspring relocated. There's, I'm unequivocal about that. It needs to go to another location. Um, I think we can provide folks in need of services a better facility in a more suitable location without being any less compassionate for people that are, need, are in need of services. And I know we can do a better job getting services to those folks. But um, we have to be able to, to get a dialogue going and work with um, Father Bill. So recently, uh, I reached out uh, to a gentleman, Ken DiDomenici, who's the CEO of Churchill Linens, and I asked him if he would set up, if he would chair a five-person working group between the city and Father Bills to open up a dialogue and see if we can start working together to address some of these issues. He's agreed to do it. Um, I will designate two people to be on that working committee, and Father Bills will designate two people. Uh, Ken will head it up. Uh, I, I asked him to do it because he's a, a local business owner who's very committed to the city and understands the needs of businesses, but he also sits on the board of Father Bills. So I think he's an individual that has 
trust from both sides of the table that's capable of bringing the two parties together. And among the issues we'll immediately be talking to them about will be relocation of, uh, of, of the mainspring. Um, and also, uh, we need to get established, and I've actually spoken to some of the pastors across the city recently to see if the churches might engage in it. We need a daytime place for these folks to go when they're booted out of the mainspring house at seven o'clock in the morning. Because at 7 a.m., about 100 in the wintertime, it's 100 and some odd people are dumped out onto the sidewalk with no plan. And if you talk to a property owner in the area, they'll tell you that they're using their private property as bathroom facilities. And uh, they're using drugs. We went down and cleaned up that area. And, and I can't tell you how many biohazard bags of uh, used needles and other things I won't even mention uh, that we removed cleaning up a, not just the Perkins Park, but the uh, church parking lot area across the street. Uh, so there are some real issues for us to work on with them. I think we've, there's some things we can do in the short run. I think the long run, uh, really, we've got to find a way that, to find a, a location that we could all agree upon that would be feasible for them, that would be more suitable to the city. And I think it's not fair for us to point out that Brockton is bearing the burden for the homeless crisis for the entire region. Every time I talk to anyone that's working with this population, they tell me that 80 to 90% of the people they provide services to are not originally from Brockton. They were drawn here for the services. And you know, the state's got to start giving us some help with it too because our resources are being tapped, our city is being stigmatized, and the majority of these folks are not even from Brockton. They're being drawn here because we're the social services mecca of Metro South. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Another thing on, on really in the same vein that's troubling is a lot of times those individuals that have to leave at 7 a.m., they walk down Main Street and they hang out at the library, uh, the main library. I've been in there many times, and it's, it's just not the right form. It's not what the library was set up for. So uh, I think we have to work in tandem. Councilor Dubois, you had some insight. I do. Um, I, what I really want to do is some, just clarify some misinformation. Um, first off, the property that Father Bills of Mainspring House was proposing to build at the corner of North Main Street and Ames Street is not a shelter. I just want everyone to know that in no way, shape, or form are those 18 units of single room occupancy permanent housing for formerly homeless veterans a shelter. It is not a shelter. It is not anything like that. what Father Bill runs at the corner of Main Street and Spring Street. They are permanent homes for veterans who serve this country admirably. And the idea that we are in any way against that, I um, find a little difficult to, to stomach because they need homes. Father Bill's and Main Spring House runs home housing like this all across the South Shore. Brockton is bearing the burden for the homelessness all across the South Shore and we have to work on that but Brockton is not bearing the burden for permanent housing for formerly homeless veterans father bills has this type of housing in very rich and affluent communities all across southeastern Massachusetts so I just want everyone to know that that housing that was proposed for the corner of um, North Main and Ames Street which is currently pending in court which had 90% of its permits um, up until the Zoning Board of Appeals issue that happened um, it is not a shelter it is permanent housing for formerly homeless veterans and formerly homeless veterans' families. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Monahan. Yes, and just to back up what Councilor Dubois said, the, uh, they had the same housing behind Main Spring on Spring Street, and there has absolutely been no problem at all with that type of housing. It's worked out quite well. It's been there for about three or four years now, and it's really worked out well. Clean. They haven't had any, any issues, any police calls. It's not the same as, as, uh, as Mainspring at all. And uh, just to go back a little further, when the mayor was talking about myself and Councilor Cruz had met with this Mainspring last year, and they are talking about putting in a community center someplace, someplace where the homeless can meet during the day. So, and I actually think they can get some federal funds for that. I'm not sure if they brought that up to the mayor's office yet. It's you did, yeah. Clearly a need for it. Right, so that, that could be a way of getting out downtown. I know it is, I mean, we have a vicious cycle downtown where people come in from out of town and they go down to the meth clinic, then they come out, hang at Perkins Park till uh, lunchtime is being served, then they go over there for a while. So it's, they're all, they're all downtown and we gotta really work on that and I know the mayor's office is, so. 
Thank you. If I could just add one more thing. There was sure. just one other, um, just a little bit of a, um, like a rumor that was out there that I'd just like to um, clarify. Um, the property itself is for, um, is for formerly homeless veterans and online there was some discussion about if you're going to build housing for formerly homeless veterans it should be built on the VA and I just want everyone here to know that Father Bills and Mainspring House is building a similar type of housing on the VA campus at this present time. They were going in parallel to build two different housing facilities, one on Main Street and one at the VA um, um, housing. It's just that not all formerly homeless veterans want to live on a VA um, campus. So there is that is going on right now. Thank you. Thank you for point of information, Councilor. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Just quick follow-ups to both of the councillors. Um, I agree with Councillor Dubois. It's not a shelter that's proposed there. I've spent a lot of time looking at it, as I know some of the councillors have. And Council Monaghan's right. The best analogy is this 26 Spring Street building, which is right directly behind the main spring shelter. It's been open for about three years. It's, it's permanent housing for people who have transitioned out of homelessness. And I checked the police logs. They've had like four calls to that building in three years, all very routine. Um, I think one was for a natural death. One was for someone breaking in, that they called for someone breaking in. So I would agree that that model type of housing has existed at 26 Spring Street for three years with no problems. Um, so I don't have a fundamental problem with the, uh, with the model. It does require a little classification. I, I believe, Councillor, it's 11 of the 18 units that they're actually committed to homeless veterans. And one of the aspects that troubles me a little is there's no guarantee that's only for the initial occupancy. There's nothing that requires them to maintain that percentage for veterans going forward. And that's one of the concerns that I have raised. I don't really have a problem with it if they are really can, can be locked into having to maintain that ongoing commitment to veterans. The issue that's arisen down there and why there's an issue with the building department and the ZBA now is that vacant lot uh, on the corner of Ames and North Main where they're looking to build this right now serves as the parking that's allocated to the old Catholic Charities building across the street that Father Bills also purchased as part of the same transaction. They bought both parcels. Well, that Catholic Charities building is falling down. It's vacant, uh, it's in deteriorating condition. Father Bills admits that they've had two different architects look at it who both advise them it's cost prohibitive to renovate it. And I've also been told by one private developer that he looked at it and determined that it was cost prohibitive to renovate it. So we've got a vacant building that's in deteriorating condition that three different architects agree is cost prohibitive to renovate. It's got to come down. Uh, because if they don't take it down in the short run, the city's going to end up having to take it down in the long run. And so we do have a legal basis, and what I've asked Father Bills to do is to commit as part of that project across the street to at the same time take down that Catholic Charities building and agree to something low density there, like maybe a duplex or something like that, not another big building full of units. Um, and I actually had an agreement from the executive director to do that uh, and then somewhere between my meeting with him and the hearing with the city, um, the legal counsel for Father Bills had a different opinion and kind of reneged on our gentleman's agreement and would not commit to taking down the Catholic Charities building. So the legal basis we're using right now is the building commissioner cannot allow the parking to an existing building to be taken away that would now leave an existing structure unable to have any future use because it no longer has any parking. So I think there's a very solid basis for the ZBA and the Building Commission to say, wait, 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 this is an imperfect plan. You can't develop the parking to this building without either providing additional parking for this building or taking this building down. So um, from my standpoint, we're uh, willing, and again, this will be another topic for the task force, another reason why I asked Ken DiDomenici to head up this effort. This will be on the agenda to see if we can come to a reasonable accommodation. The businesses in that area do not want that building. I've heard them loud and clear. 
But I think that if taking down the old Catholic Charities building and replacing it with something new and low density was part of the plan, then I think at the end of the day we could say that overall the neighborhood had been improved and I think that's the goal. Uh, let's not forget, that's an ugly vacant lot on the corner of Ames and North Main that has been vacant for a long time. Um, so uh, it, it, it's, it is complex, but I, I do agree with most of what Councillor Dubois said in terms of the, the nature of what they're proposing to build there. But I do think there are some real issues we need to resolve before I'll agree to go forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody else on that subject? Seeing none, we'll move on. Anybody else here in the audience have any questions for any of the local officials? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Chris Koska. Um, I was just wondering if someone could take a look at all the lighting downtown. I know it's being replaced, but between Ames and all the way up, it's about 40 lights out. And if we want down, uh, downtown to be safe, we might want to get a little brighter. From Ames to where, Chris? Um, Pleasant and Warren to Montello. There's about 40 out that about for years. Yeah, we, we have looked specifically in that area of North Main Street where we have ordered some replacement lights, but I, I because we're trying to get cameras in and, and, uh, and lights, we know one, one of, part of our strategy to that North Main Street area we were talking about is to have it much more brightly lit at night and to have it covered with surveillance cameras. We think that'll discourage illegal activity there. Uh, but to Chris's point, I'm certainly willing to extend that review up to Ames Street, and I don't. I think the councils would support us in uh, in in. Re in what's that? Allen, Allen Street. Okay, Allen Street. That, that's the other direction, right? Okay. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll, ex we'll I, I think the council would support us extending that search here if we have to find. If we have to find a little money to pay for some lights, I, I think we'd all want the area to be properly lit. Uh, on, on that light, what, what, on that light, on, on that question, <laughs> on that question, actually, just a point of information. Uh, as you may recall, under the previous administration, uh, the city council urged uh, the streetlight acquisition, acquire the streetlights. We did that, $44,000. The city owns the lights now. Last year alone, 650000 was saved. I filed a resolve, my colleagues signed on, it was a collective resolve. Uh, we had the mayor and Mr. Conan, CFO, come before us. Uh, we'd like to see phase two, meaning replace those street lights with LED lights. They have a 10 year warranty. There's gonna be an upfront cost, but if you amortize it and over 10 years, it's a win-win. And one of the, uh, the things that the gentleman, he flew up from North Carolina, he mentioned, and, and Council Stewart was uh, intrigued by some of the uh, technology. You see Mayor Walsh doing the Wi-Fi in Boston, right, around certain areas. Um, but what, it, what, what this gentleman said, uh, George Woodbury, is that in certain areas of the city of Brockton, some of the problemed areas are so-called crime areas or potential crime areas. You can actually have high-density high lighting, LED lighting. I know Mr. Cardin's on board. I know the mayor, to his credit, is looking at it. I think it's a discussion that needs to continue. But uh, thank you for bringing that to his attention. Council DiNapoli. Point of interest uh, for all the folks that are out there, uh, where we did take over the street lights. If you see a street light out, every street light is marked with a number, uh, either on a Verizon or a Comcast or a, uh, uh, or, or an Edison pole. They're they're all tagged. You can call it into the DPW. The telephone number is five five zero eight five eight zero seven one three five. Speak to Sharon, and they will have that light turned on. If you need a street light you call your ward counselor and we will uh, make the, uh, the application out and get a street light put in if you need a street light. If it's you know dark in your neighborhood and there's no light on that particular pole. But anybody in the city, if you drive around and see a light out, you know, you can call or you can call us and let us know the lights are out. I mean, I call all the time. So, it, it, it takes weeks, I'm sorry. There is a delay, okay? So you have to be patient. What? It, well, let, 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 let me give you an example. I'm, I'm still waiting for street lights to be installed, and I turned them in early summer. Okay, so it's a couple of months. But when they're on, they, everybody calls me up. It was a little bit delayed, but we thank you very much. Okay. There, 
if, if I could, there is a difference between a new installation and, and, and a replacement. And why I say that is when we acquired the street lights, the city of Brockton owns the asset, the Cobra light. We don't own the pole. That's National Grid. So when the city wants to install a new light, we have to deal with National Grid for purposes of climbing their property, their pole. Uh, Councilor from Ward 7, Shirley Azak, and myself uh, recently were contacted. And to Shirley's credit, she jumped on it, and I assisted, and it got changed overnight. That, wasn't a, that was a replacement of a bulb that wasn't an additional change. If you could come forward, just because people can't hear it, if you could speak into the mic, that's great. Midsummer to now, trying to get them replaced. Well, you got us all here now, so you don't have to call anybody. <laughs> I just don't know what's reasonable. You, know, you call and you call back and you call back, and they still haven't changed the lights. What's your street address? Silver Road. It should have been done quite a That was my question. Councilor Azak. Good evening. How are you, Donna? Um, actually, if you'd contact. I've gotten a lot of calls, and I think I see some of my constituents yeah. back there that made some of the calls. If you contact your city councilor and you give them the poll number, location, street, I've been told by the DPW three weeks. Um, three weeks, and they should um, get it up, get the light on. If there's, if it, there's already, if it's just a light bulb. Okay. So, thank you. Any other questions tonight from the audience? Yes say you know that's council of cruises ward i think interim dpw commissioner mr riley has been very responsive to requests from councilors and i'm sure that uh, he'll be very willing to work with council of cruise tomorrow and trying to get a resolution to that if you could come forward just speak into the mic please i just want to comment on what you say when i had a ward meeting put together with the help of bill um, a few years back um, I had, you know, one of the requests was uh, lights and, you know, getting everybody involved with, you know, the request that we had for the neighborhood to make it safer. One of the things was light. So we had a light um, added to the East Junior High Field and then also a light at the end of um, Char uh, Provost and Hobson. So it's just, it's just a matter of just talking to, you know, the officials and just keep on calling. It's like, my grandmother said the squeak wheel get the grease and you know we got the lights that we needed and it is i just wanted to add to you know just let her know that it, it happens pretty quick you know just i think it happened within like a couple weeks when when i had your help before so just wanted to thank you the city of brockton also has a good relations the guy's name is joe cardinal over at national grid he's based here in brockton on ashland street so uh we We'll work together. Of course, when you acquire something, the magnitude of every street light in the city of Brockton takes a little time. But the city, to their credit, Mr. Rowley and Mr. Casseri, they're, they're working, and it's going to be diligent. But again, don't hesitate to call not just the, the ward councilors, but the at-large councilors as well. Councilor Den Denapoli. Just, just one more follow-up on the on the installation of a of a new light versus a light that's out. Uh, when when the city took over the street lights in the city of Brockton, we had to hire an outside vendor to install the lights and install the bulbs. And what happened was the gentleman didn't have the proper, I'll say this, didn't have the proper insurance. So that put everything back, you know, a month or two. But now what happens is they install the light, but Edison has to hook up the light to the pole because they don't have the proper equipment and I guess the knowledge to hook up the light. So it's a two phase, we get the light up, and then we have the light turned on. Okay, so be patient with us. It does take time, but they, they, they are up. They, are, they, do, they, they do work, okay? Thank you, Councilor. <clears throat> Any other questions tonight? I was remiss when I gave an update. I, uh, last Friday, I had the opportunity to sit down with the superintendent, Kathy Smith, at her office at Central. Uh, one of the things, if you didn't see it on TV, uh, when she came before the city council with Councilor Rodriguez and Councilor Stewart, uh, was to uh, come up with an idea of much more collaboration. That's what we're, we're doing tonight. All the elected officials here collaborating with you to work together. Uh, but with Kathy, uh, uh, what you see is what you get. And she did indicate to us, uh, with the next president coming in, um, she'd like to have uh, continued collaboration with the city council. And, uh, and of course, the school committee and the mayor, we can all work in conjunction to better Brockton. But since she's here tonight, one of the things, and I think not to put her on the spot, but one of the things that 
uh, maybe I am, but one of the things that she mentioned uh, is for the elected officials uh, to go on a, on a school visit. We called it a tour, a, a bus tour that night. I don't think that's ex actually what it is. Um, but we need to come up with a date. Uh, that was one of the things that she mentioned to me. So I think for, since she's here tonight, we should really contemplate honing in on a date to do that uh, because we have to work for tr transportation purposes. And again, we need the mayor's schedule, the school committee schedule, and the city council schedule. Uh, am I right, Ms. Madam Superintendent? Thank you, Councilor Sullivan, and thank you for meeting with me. Uh, very productive. Uh, we talked about those meetings coming before the city council. Uh, talking about a number of things happening in the Brockton Public Schools so that we're not just coming before you when it's budget time, but to really get your input, let you know how we're progressing on our strategic plan and what are the issues that we're dealing with day in and day out. So what we'd like to do, we had talked about a tour of our facilities. Um, we have the support of our Ray Ledoux that will work with us from BAT to make that happen. I have a list here of a number of Saturday mornings we were hoping to meet at Central Administration. We'd go over some of the things that we've done in the district, uh, the Barrett Russell School, which was brought back on board last year. It's our kindergarten center, housing almost 300 kindergarten students. This year there were um, rehabilitation done to our Kennedy modular classrooms. They've come out wonderful. Um, it's not quite the space that we needed, but I'd like you to see those things and I'd like you to see the critical areas of need. So I have a list of um, some dates that we've put together. If you could just check off what might work for you, we'll get back to you on an agenda. And the other thing was um, we had an excellent uh, luncheon last year with our legislators. And I thank our Representative Cronin for being here. Um, again, Representative Brady, Canavan, and certainly uh, Senator Kennedy in supporting many of the things that are happening day in and day out at the State House and uh, Congressman Lynch at the federal level. So we had talked about the luncheon and we realized that all of us work. So somebody had mentioned when I was before the City Council of looking to do a dinner. I think that would be a wonderful thing to do uh, early evening. Um, Councillor Sullivan mentioned maybe a Wednesday or a Thursday evening. We'd like to provide uh, a dinner for you, possibly made by our own students in the Fine Arts Cafe, which is what we had last year. And it gives us an opportunity to share with our elected officials, our legislative body, some of the things that we need them advocating for us. Uh, many grants come before them, or certainly uh, initiatives at all levels. So we'd like to do that sooner than later. Uh, last year we did it at May, the, it, the session is almost over. This year we thought if we could do that sooner before Thanksgiving, we could certainly let them know what our priorities and concerns are. So I'd like to just pass this around, if you could just take a look and maybe check off some of the dates that are available to you. Thank you very much, Madam Superintendent. And, and, and it was actually Councilor Lodge Stewart that brought to the attention to try to do it post, uh, post work uh, because of commuting purposes and the like. Uh, is there anything else before us tonight? Does anybody else have anything else that they want to address? Um, again, I just, I just want to thank all the local officials uh, for taking time tonight. Um, is, should, come on up, Mr. Tagger, if you have a... Good evening. I actually just wanted to let you guys all know and everyone that's here, um, myself and some residents are going to be holding a, uh, we're going to call it a Dancing Through the Decades um, event with, uh, we're collaborating with the Boys and Girls Club. It's free, um, free event. I'm just trying to build um, community relations. I have a positive um, atmosphere and dance for, the, for our young people and actually get some of us out there too gives us a reason to um, get out there and have some fun with our kids. So I just wanted, it's going to be on the 24th. It's going to be at the Boys and Girls Club in Brockton. Um, we are, are asking if people want to dress up. Uh, again, that gives us a reason, again, to have some fun with our kids and getting the costume. Um, so again, it's on the 24th, 6 o'clock to 10, free admission. We're going to have games, um, prizes, dance con um, contests. I'm actually going to challenge Monahan over there to break dancing. We well, heard you were going to do the electric slide. Is that true? I, I was thinking about it, but only break dancing. Part okay. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Monahan's good at that. Yeah. 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 That's what I heard. He does the windmill and all that stuff. He's good. Yeah, he'll do the slide. That's why his hair's kind of gone up top there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure we in, um, made sure we invite you guys, and we're also going to be having a meeting tomorrow at Ten Rays Pizza, free pizza. 
um, just to work out the logistics and things. So I just wanted to invite everybody that's here. Um, I'm just taking this opportunity to try to make sure I spread the word. Uh, thank you to br for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, thank, thank you, you sir. Thank, thank you. you very much. Anything else? Dennis Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. And two, just two comments. First off, I want to take time to thank everybody that's here this evening. I think it's very, very important uh, that we continue to uh, conduct these meetings. I have been involved for a good, good many years, and I've, <clears throat> I've always felt that uh, through the communication of having the public people before us, I think it makes us, uh, it makes us better politicians as well, and, and we're out there working uh, daily for our, uh, for our people all the time. Um, just uh, one comment, just to go backwards, just for something that was mentioned in regards to the south section of the city, and it was uh, the Kmart Plaza. And I just want people to know that uh, Councilor Staninsky uh, from Ward 4 and I, as Council from Ward 3, we, we share a lot of that southwest corridor. And that item um, in regards to Kmart Plaza in that area has been on our agenda for a good many years. Um, again, the, the fault of, of what happened with Shaw's under the Harrington administration uh, put, put us in a tough position down there. Um, and, and again, through the efforts of uh, our new Mayor, Mayor Carpenter, we're trying to address the issue. And uh, he's, um, he's working uh, with us as well as, like you mentioned, uh, Gary Leonard from uh, um, his Main Street manager is working with us as well. But I think one of the positive things that didn't get mentioned um, this evening is um, within the next few weeks, you're going to see the Cumberland Farms at Haywood Ave and Main Street. That's going to be uh, replaced with a new Cumberland Farm, similar to the one that Councilor DiNapoli has here right in Ward 5, right down at the corner of Lyman and Crescent Street. And to his credit, um, excellent corner. Council, I, I, I grew up in this neighborhood, and believe it or not, my grandmother lived in a house that was right in that corner so many years ago. So that's a welcome sight for Crescent Street and Lyman Street. And you're going to have that just on, on the southwest section of the city, um, as well as there's other businesses that have located, um, you know, in that area and, and are doing some work. So, yes, we need to address that issue there with the plaza, and hopefully we can, um, we can do that over the, over the next uh, you know, the next several months and year to, to come up with uh, something there. But I, I just do want to announce that tomorrow evening I'm going to be holding a Ward 3 meeting. That's tomorrow, Tuesday evening, September 30th. It's going to be at the John F. Kennedy School. Uh, Mayor Coppin is going to be a guest speaker. Gary Leonard, Brockton Main Street Manager, is going to be present. Robert Jenkins from the Brockton Redevelopment. Uh, he's the director of the redevelopment. is going to be present. Charles Kimner from the Old Colony Planning Council, uh, and as well as Officer William Healy, Brockton Police Department for... Uh, as our Crime Watch coordinator will be present as well. And it's tomorrow evening at the Kennedy School from 7, try to get out about uh, 8.30, and uh, it's open to the residents of Ward 3, the general public. I even uh, asked my counselors if they wish to attend, counselors at large. Hopefully, Council Monahan might lend me some money to buy some pizzas. I'm not sure, but um, I'm working on that. But in any case, there'll be light refreshments, and, uh, and I will have pizza, counselor. So <laughs> thank you, and uh, appreciate anybody that can attend. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Were there any other uh, councils, uh, Councilor yeah. Dinapoli? Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilor from Ward 3, thank you for the kind words. The new uh, Cumberland Farms that's on the east side, they had a soft opening. It is open now. Uh, it, it, it's a defi definite improvement to the corner. And when I met with them, they're, they're going to do three locations. One on the north side that, that, that isn't uh, really uh, uh, down down pat yet. They're, they're waiting for a, a, a certain uh, owner to, so they can buy the property, but they moved out of the, uh, the, the small little location. But there will be a Cumberland Farms on the north side, and the co uh, council from Ward 3 just mentioned they're going to renovate the uh, one on the, uh, down in his ward on Main Street. Uh, on Wednesday evening at the Plouffe Academy, I will be hosting a ward meeting at 6.30. And the reason why we're having this ward meeting is we have uh, guests from the state highway department, uh, our uh, DPW commissioner, and the uh, highway department uh, people will be there. We're going to receive anywhere from four to five million dollars in state funding to do road construction in Ward Five and bridge work, and it's around the uh, the Pluff School, the Crescent Street, Summer Street, and Grove Street. There's bridges that the water goes underneath and the bridges are all going to be reconstructed. We're going to have new roads, new sidewalks, and uh, they're going to make a special announcement. I don't know if you know this, Madam Superintendent, are you still here? We're, we're going to get lights put in at your school, at, at my school, and your school, at the Plouffe School. We included that in the, in the circular of money. It's about an $80,000 project, but the Plouffe School will have working cross lights on the corner of Plymouth Street. So 
you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but uh, it, it will be uh, announced at, at by ward meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, on that note, I, I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council. Any other councils? Council Isaac. I would just like to announce uh, my ward meeting for Ward 7. Uh, actually, it's going to be October 15th at 7 p.m. at Buffalo Wild Wings up at, um, at the uh, Westgate Mall. <laughs> and there will be like refreshments there. And I'm just trying to use different businesses to bring people into our, we have a lot of nice restaurants. We have a lot of things happening in our city. So I just want to use something different. That's why I'm having it up there. I want people to come through their doors. Thank you, Councilor. Anybody else on the council side? Anybody on the school committee side? I want to thank uh, the mayor. I want to thank the school committee members. Uh, again, Mr. Minicello, Mr. Lendy, and all the city councils. More importantly, I want to thank you. Uh, that was the whole gist of this meeting. This is the second out of uh, four anticipated meetings. Originally, we wanted to do it quarterly. Uh, we got a little confused because of the budget and some uh, special meetings, so the second meeting didn't come to fruition in a timely manner. But we're having it tonight, and I'm hoping that we'll have it again um, in October. And, uh, and, and also in November. Uh, Mr. Jordan, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, I did. I uh, wanted to thank the audience, but I know from my past of sitting out there, most of you have something on your mind. Don't be bashful coming up to the microphone. Please come up with those things that you wanted to speak about and let us know. This is your time to give us the input. So don't be bashful about that. Come on up, say what you have to say, you know, that's what we need to know. This is excellent for us. This is your time. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, Mr. School Committee. Uh, one more thing. Uh, Brockton High Football is playing BC High uh, this Friday night, October 4th, 7 o'clock. And if you know Bob Lanzetta and Linksy, if you're affiliated with Brockton High teaching or, more importantly, uh, the football program, uh, they're going to honor him at halftime. So it would be great to get more people out there for, the, for the, the young men that are really hitting the gridiron, but also for Mr. Lanzetta. With that being said, I'm going to conclude this meeting, and I wish everybody a good night.